Let's get a divorce. What? Why? I'm taking over my lover's company. So, I don't need you anymore. My husband, Mark, said this with a look of triumph on his face. From my point of view, I was rather grateful that he started saying about the divorce and confessing about his lover by himself. Okay, I don't really care. Here's the divorce paper. My husband looked at me as he widened his eyes while I handed him the divorce papers I had taken out of the drawer. My name is Lily Smith and I am a 30-year-old office worker. My husband, Mark, and I have been married for three years now. We met at a blind date which was set up by our mutual friend. My husband approached me aggressively and I was attracted to him so that's why we began to go out and go on dates. We went out on dates frequently and one year later, since we began going out, Mark proposed to me and we got married. Mark was always kind and was a gentleman to me and I thought I would have a very happy life if I married him. In fact, our married life was quite enjoyable, but there were some things that were different from what I expected after we got married. And that was that my husband does not do any housework or chores at all. I was always eating out at restaurants or eating pre-made meals from shops. Like that, my husband has rarely cooked any meal by himself, even when he was on his own. He also said that his mother came over to where he lived sometimes, to even do the cleaning for him. So, I always came home from work and did all the housework and chores. Sometimes, I casually appealed to my husband to help me out on some chores, but he stubbornly refused to help. But, he never complains when I work late and that he had to have late dinner because of that. So, I guess I should be thankful for that. Other than not doing any housework, he's basically normal and we talk a lot and enjoy each other's companies. I think my physical workload is a bit much having to do all the housework, but I'm getting by these days because I buy prepared foods and cut back on some house chores moderately when I can. So like that, even though I wasn't fully happy, I was still enjoying our married life in my own way. Before I knew it, I had been married to my husband for three years. I had hoped that this relationship would change again once we had a child, but we were not able to have a child as we had hoped. Thinking that perhaps one of us might be the cause, I suggested to my husband that we try some tests and do infertility treatment. But to that, my husband's reaction was surprising. We don't have to have kids, right? Pardon me? I was completely surprised to what he had said. I had thought that people usually wanted to have kids, but it is true that there may be families who want to spend time alone with their spouses without having any kids. Maybe my husband was thinking the same like that. Um, just in case, may I ask why? Oh, ah, uh, uh, well, what can I say? There are a lot of trouble and... Huh? To be honest, I was disillusioned by this statement from my own husband. It was not because he had a good reason for it, but because it was a random and a very vague reason. But, at the same time, I felt that if someone with such a half-hearted feeling, like my husband, had a child in that kind of condition, the child would be very unhappy. I see. Okay, I get it. Then, I understand. We won't try for making any kids. When I said that, my husband looked really relieved. I was very disappointed that he did not want any kids that badly. Not only did he not want any kids, but I was doing all the work around the house. Moreover, I can't say out loud so as not to provoke my husband's pride, but my salary is considerably higher than his. So, it is no exaggeration to say that I am the main breadwinner of this house. Furthermore, we have been talking less and less lately than we used to before. 
My husband has stopped communicating with me more recently. He is on his phone all the time, and on his days off, he often says, I'm going out for drinks with my friends, and goes out after lunch and comes home late sometimes. On most of the weekends, I am alone at home, and even if we have dinner together at night, he is very silent and isn't talkative, and because of that, I don't feel that the meal tastes that good. If this situation continues, I might as well end the marriage with him. I was having such a hard time in my marriage with my husband that I was even thinking about divorce. And it was at such a point in time that I came to learn about something very surprising. On one Saturday night, my husband was out drinking with his friends as usual. In the midst of all this, I received a text message from one of my best friend, Anna. I was surprised to get a message from her out of the blue because she said that she and her husband were going to a luxurious restaurant for a dinner today for their wedding anniversary. But what she had messaged me was even more surprising. Hey Lily, your husband Mark just walked into the restaurant with a woman I've never seen before. I froze when I saw Anna's message. No way. Is my husband having an affair with another woman? It's at a fancy restaurant, and he's never even taken me there or been there with me. According to Anna and her observation, it didn't seem like a work or friends atmosphere, but clearly exuded the feeling of lovers. I was getting angrier and angrier at my husband. And then, it all made sense. The hassle of having children. The fact that he frequently went out for drinks with his friends on the weekends. And the fact that he was so concerned about his phone. If I thought about it, all of these behaviors certainly make it likely that he was having an affair. Why didn't I suspect it earlier? But I still don't really know if he really is having an affair with another woman or not. So, I immediately requested an investigator to look into the case. I didn't officially obtain any solid evidence of his affair yet. Until I saw the evidence that clearly and visibly showed that Mark was having an affair, I decided to hold out just a little bit of hope. But reality is cruel. A few weeks later, I received the results of the investigation, and all I could see was that it definitely showed my husband having an affair with another woman. I was indeed surprised and shocked. Although we have been having many differences and miscommunications recently, I still loved my husband and wanted to believe in him. However, my husband had acted in a way that violated my feelings. I can't believe it. How could he have an affair with another woman so easily? Moreover, it seems that my husband often goes to various fancy restaurants with his lover. Is he really spending that much money to devote all on his lover? And when I began to think that, I had finally realized something. It was something my husband had been asking me to do for about six months. My husband had asked me to put a little more money into the house because he wanted to send money to his parents. Since I was earning more than my husband, he asked me to support him a little bit. It's not like I didn't dislike my in-laws, and my own parents had already passed away and I had no relatives who I can send money to, so I just agreed to his idea. I am sure that my husband used that money to devote for his own lover. Thinking that, I became even more disillusioned with my husband. I wondered how far he would go to use me for his own convenience. I was also angry at myself for not realizing about this earlier, that my husband has been deceiving me all this time. So I decided to start making various preparations so that I could divorce my husband at any time. First of all, I had to prepare to move out. I no longer wanted to live in this house because it would remind me of my husband. So, I decided to look for a new place to live. I was busy with work, so it was not easy to find a new house in between my busy work schedule. But still, 
I visited a real estate agency. At the same time, my husband was meeting with his friends or his lover, as usual, and looked for a good room suitable for living alone. It was a month later that I was able to decide on a new place to live. Now, I had a place to move to. All that remained was to take revenge on my husband. I hired a lawyer and prepared for it. Then one day, my husband called me into the living room and said he wanted to talk to me. Wow, it's pretty rare for you to call out for me to have a talk. My husband looked annoyed when I said that. It won't take that long. I did as I was told and sat down on the sofa, waiting for my husband's next words. Then, my husband grinned and began to say this. Let's get a divorce. I did not expect for my husband to begin the talk and initiate about divorce. I was genuinely surprised. I wondered what kind of process he was going to use to try to get a divorce with me. So I asked him, pretending to not know about the truth. What? Why? Then my husband responds something very surprising. I'm taking over my lover's company. Excuse me? So, I don't need you anymore. Thanks for supporting me this whole time. Not only do you earn a lot of money, but you took very good care of the house for me. You were great as a housekeeper, who also earned a lot for me. But I won't be needing that anymore. Now, I will have a beautiful young wife and a promising future as a CEO. I am truly a winner in life. I'm sorry for what I did to you, but don't hold any grudges against me. My husband says this with a victorious look on his face. From my point of view, I was rather grateful that he started saying about the divorce and confessing about his lover by himself. Okay, I don't really care. Here's the divorce paper. When I handed him the divorce papers I had taken out of the drawer, he had a very surprised look and his eyes widened. What the hell? Aren't you surprised by the whole situation? And when did you even prepare the divorce papers? Well, your attitude towards me lately has been cold, you know? That's why I thought we were getting a divorce. And it would be more convenient for you if we got divorced early. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. My husband was surprised, but he realized it was a win-win situation for him and started to grin. I didn't think that you were that understanding, but thanks for that then. Thanks for everything until now. Well, enjoy your single life at best. My husband seemed to be enjoying himself while he said that. I pretended that I was not angry at him and spoke to my husband frankly. Have you already talked to your lover's father? Hmm? Oh, no, not yet. But she told me that it's decided that the man she chooses will be the one to take over as the CEO. So, since I'm going to marry her, it's a done deal that I'm going to be the CEO, you know. I see. Well, I wish you all the best. Oh, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. My husband looks like he's getting carried away. And he doesn't even know the hell he's going to experience after this. I silently watched my husband, an idiot, pack up his belongings and leave to go to his lover. I struggled to hold back my laughter until he left the house. I then sold the house shortly after my husband had left and completed my move as well. The next step was to officially begin my revenge against my husband. What I would do, however, was very simple. All I had to do was send a content certified letter to my husband's workplace and to his lover's parents' house. With this, my revenge against my husband was complete. All that remained was for my husband to just ruin himself all on his own. Sure enough, two or three days after I sent the content certified mail, I received a phone call from my husband. Hello? Hey, 
What the hell did you do? Why the hell did you send a content certified letter to my workplace and her parents' house? Huh? Well, why wouldn't I send them? You had an affair behind my back, you know. An affair? Normally, you would file a claim for alimony against the husband and his mistress, and then proceed with a divorce, right? What? I thought you forgave me and my lover. Are you stupid? Where in the world would anybody simply forgive the people who betrayed the marriage and step aside as if nothing happened? N no way. But how did you know where her parents lived? Even before you confessed, I had hired a professional investigator to investigate your affair and obtained information about your lover. So, I knew that she was the daughter of the president of a company and I knew her family home. How can this be? So, what happened when I sent a content certified letter to her parents' house? I asked with a huge grin on my face. Then, my husband got angry as if he remembered and said this. Well, yes, because of you, I'm in a lot of trouble. Because she didn't know that I was married. That's why I secretly broke up with you and divorced you and tried to be with her. But, since you sent a content certified letter to her parents' house, that means that her parents found out about the affair, and now I'm in a tight spot. She's furious that she was cheated on, and her father has filed a complaint to the CEO of my company where I work at. And I have been fired as someone who has caused a big problem within the company. Her father's company was an important business partner of ours. Aw, too bad. This is all your fault. You better take responsibility for this. Huh? What the hell are you saying? You were the one who betrayed me and had an affair behind my back, right? I only made a, a legitimate request. I'll make sure you pay my alimony. N no way! There's no way I can pay for your alimony after I got fired from my job. Well, I couldn't care less about that. Get a job right now and pay me back every little bit you can. You, you've got to be kidding me. I'll go to your place right now and force you to live with me. You. You know where I live? Huh? What the hell are you saying? You're living at our house that we bought together, right? Our house? You only see things in your own convenient way, don't you? I bought that house in my name, so I already sold it. Oh no. No way. Then where am I supposed to go now that I've been kicked out of her house? I don't know. You're a grown man, so do something about it on your own. Okay, well, I'm gonna hang up then. Hey, w wait, don't hang up. I hung up the phone and blocked the call, not caring about my husband's panicked voice. Just as I wanted, my husband lost everything and I was so relieved. After that, I officially filed a claim for alimony through my lawyer. I heard that my husband was living in a cheap apartment while working at a part-time job, and he's now desperately trying to pay the alimony. He also tried to ask his own parents for help, but since I had told them about me giving money to him to send for his parents, they were so furious and said that they would cut off ties with their own son. Therefore, my husband seems to be living a lonely and poor life alone, having been abandoned by his own parents. Meanwhile, I am living comfortably in my new place and working hard at my job. I have recently been promoted and my salary has gone up even more, so I am thinking of taking up a new hobby and live a nice, luxurious life. Mark is such a cowardly husband, trying to get a divorce in secret and aiming for a better marriage. But then, would it be better for him if he didn't say anything about taking over his lover's company? I guess that kind of thing is what makes a scumbag husband after all. I am glad that Lily was able to get revenge on her scumbag husband. I hope you will be able to marry a wonderful man this time. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video. 
My name is Kate. I am a housewife who's married to a farmer. Kyle and I have been married for 20 years. From early in the morning until late at night, I am busy with farm work and household chores. It is not that difficult. Hey, Kate. This soup broth, you seasoned it right. You're the wife in your household, so you should get the broth right. Geez, you are only good at making bad food. Compared to the sarcasm hurled at me by my mother-in-law and husband, it's not the least bit painful being busy with farm work and chores. I am amazed at how often they have the energy to complain about the soup I make. Ugh. I'm throwing this away because it's disgusting. Just a moment, Mum. My mother-in-law and my husband threw away the soup that they've been drinking into the kitchen sink. We've been married for 20 years, and this kind of harassment is a daily occurrence. Yet there is a reason why I am not divorcing my husband. Grandma, that's a bit too much. Yula called out to my mother-in-law in the kitchen. Yula will turn 17 this year. She's our daughter. Yula, I can't let you eat such a sloppy dish. You see, you have to understand that. Oh yeah, Mom, can you come here, please? Yula, are you ignoring your grandmother? Yula ignored my mother-in-law and took me out into the hallway. Let's get out of this house. But this is your home too. That again? That's enough. I gotta go to school. And breakfast? I don't want to eat with those people. And after saying that, Yula went up to the second floor to her room. Apparently, Yula was not convinced with what I said. What should I do? Looking down at the staircase, I could only mutter that. For Yula's sake too, I think it's best to try and make things work in this house. But a few days after this, an incident occurs. I have something to tell you, but I think I might be sick. A few days later, I told this to my husband. I just received a notice from the cancer screening facility at the local center for another examination. Okay, that's just great. Huh? This guy is happy that his own wife is sick. Then, as my husband grinned, he showed me a picture on his phone. The image showed my husband and a young woman embracing each other in a revealing manner. Honey, is this? Well, that's what the world calls adultery. She's young and pretty, isn't she? What are you talking about? That's disgusting. My husband's words made me yell at him without thinking. What the hell? You got a problem with that? But this? You got a problem with me? Get a divorce. Get out. Ah! My husband pushes me and curses me. You. You forgot how much you owe us for feeding you in this house. If you were a wife, you'd have the common sense to not give a damn about your husband's womanizing. But adultery is an act of infidelity. It's your fault. You're not an attractive woman. My husband responded plainly to my objection. Hey, what the? Then my mother-in-law, startled by my husband's angry voice, came over. Hey, mom, listen to me. Kate is really insane. As my husband proudly told her that he was having an affair, he also appealed to her that it was insane for me to be repulsed by infidelity. No matter how much she spoils her son, she'll take my side this time, right? I was a fool to think so, even for a moment. My mother-in-law, after hearing my husband's story, said, "That's your fault." What? It is common for husbands to have affairs. How small-minded of you to not allow that! Think of Kyle, who is being blamed by you. My mother-in-law's statement left me speechless. Wouldn't she also hate it if her own husband was having an affair?
if my late father-in-law had an affair, would my mother-in-law have been okay with it? You are unfit to be a wife. I'd feel sorry for Kyle if he doesn't at least have a mistress. I was stunned by my mother-in-law's statement. My husband then said this to me. Oh yeah, I'm going on an overseas trip with my girlfriend tomorrow. Until then, don't skimp on your work and chores. Are you saying? Shut up. I don't like sick woman. I don't want to be part of this. My husband's words left me with my mouth agape. We can't work as a couple anymore. But if we get divorced, Eula might have to stay in this house. I felt horrified at the thought. Anyway, I must try to avoid that. But things took an unexpected turn and progressed faster than I thought. Let's separate, please. It was dinner time that day. I was bowing my head to my husband. Mom! I take one look at Eula, who was staring at me dumbfoundedly, and continued. I have been enduring things for a long time for Eula's sake, but adultery is one thing I can't tolerate. I will take Eula and leave this house. Hey, Eula is my grandchild. If you want a grandchild, why don't you have Kyle have a baby with a girl he's in a relationship with? Huh, Dad? Are you really cheating? Eula, don't be fooled by this woman. Husbands must have a mistresses, and she's crazy for not being able to stand it. Grandma, shut up for a second. Eula nailed it, and as expected, my mother-in-law shut up. I'm not going to pay you alimony. You say it's adultery, but you don't have any proof. That means you can't sue me. Ha ha ha. My anger was at its height when he said those words and laughed with amusement. But I cannot get too emotional here, because no matter what, I have to take Eula with me. You don't have to pay. However, I will take Eula with me. And please do not contact us at all in the future. There's no way I'm going to let a woman like you raise Eula, will I? That's right, you have to give Eula to us. I'll stay with my dad. Besides, I'm sure it will be more convenient for you. Huh? Eula? Mom, you might be ill, right? If you get divorced and take me with you, it would only be troublesome for you. Well, Eula is so smart, unlike you. Well said, Eula. Eula. I was stunned to hear my daughter's words. But then, Eula whispered this to me. Mom, run away while Dad is on the trip. I'll handle the rest. Eula, don't worry, it's gonna be alright. I'll tell you the details later. Then, Eula smiled as she said that. I nodded softly. Then I'm going to. While my husband and mother-in-law were away from home, I went back to my parents' house. My husband kept calling me to come home, but I ignored him. Then I went to the hospital and get another checkup. It turned out that I had early-stage breast cancer. I called my husband to report this, but... Dear, I was sick after all. I knew you were damaged goods. Okay, divorce it is, but I'll get custody. I'm not going to let a deadbeat like you take Eula, unless you have the means to feed her, you know? I could not answer my husband's words. I am sure Eula will be fine remaining with him. I have a plan that I discussed with her. If it succeeds, Eula can live with me without any problems. That's right, I'm going on another trip abroad with my girlfriend. And in the meantime, I need you to take care of my house. If you don't come, Eula will be doing the farm work alone. My mom will be traveling with me too. I bit my lip and endured my anger. But it's okay, because our plan is going well. However, I'm about to be hospitalized. 
that means I cannot go to my husband's house. Would you mind if my brother came over there? I have to stay at the hospital. That's why. Ah, what a useless wife! It can't be helped. I'll let you do that. Thank you, dear. My husband's words made me chuckle. With this, our strategy will work. Thus, I divorced him, leaving Yula with my husband. With the help of my parents, I managed to survive my illness. A year had passed since then. I even managed to get a job, and now I'm living alone in an apartment with my family in my hometown. Since I had been in the hospital for the past year, I have not seen Yula. I wonder how Yula is doing. As I muttered this, there was a violent banging on the front door. Kate, I know you're in there. Help me, please, Kate. What? Kyle and my mother-in-law? I opened the door, and Kyle and my mother-in-law were standing there in tears. And why the heck are you here? Ignoring my cold shoulder, they got down on their knees in front of me at the entrance. Please stop, Eula. We were bad, so please tell Eula not to sue me. What happened? And please stop kneeling. The neighbors will see. So, oh, sorry. I agree. Getting down on my knees was a bit too much. They both say so and stand up, looking embarrassed. In the meantime, please come inside. Then we'll have a talk. My ex-husband and my ex-mother-in-law entered my room with reserve. Then they told me something astonishing. Eula left home. Huh? And what's more, she'll sue us. Is that? Actually, this is what happened. They explained to me about what happened to Eula. Somehow. Yula took Kyle's bank book that he had hidden to use as evidence for his infidelity and away from home. So, where is Yula? At your brother's place. You can't be serious. My brother Samuel is a lawyer. In order to sue my husband for adultery, she seemed to have gone to my brother's place for advice. Have you heard anything from your brother or from Yula? No, I haven't. Good. If they ever say anything, don't ever sue us, okay? Yes. You understand, right? That's what a wife does. We were already divorced, though. Really? Just when I thought that I could finally start a new family, Eula's just trying to ruin it. If you ever hear from Eula, make sure you tell her not to sue us. What happened to that obedient behavior earlier? As soon as they saw that I didn't know what was going on, they both went back to talking to me in their usual tone. Hey, train fare? Huh? We've come all the way here, so you should at least pay for our transportation. Oh, I understand. I was afraid of rebelling and getting into trouble. I offered them both a one hundred dollar bill. My ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law snatched the money and went home. Mom, how are you doing? After they had gone, I received a phone call from Eula. I am so glad the plan worked. Yeah, I got proof of the affair and your bank book that he took and hid away. Where are you now? Uncle's place. Once he saw the evidence of the affair that I took with me, he smiled with satisfaction. Hearing Eula's happy voice, I couldn't help but burst into laughter. I never thought you would think of something like this. A year ago, no matter how hard we searched, your uncle and I couldn't find any evidence of the affair. That's why I told you everything's gonna be fine. But how did you gather the evidence? It's easy. Dad didn't lock his phone. So that's why I was able to get the messages and pictures of them and his affair partner. But your dad and I are already divorced, you know. Do you think I can claim compensation? I asked my uncle about that too. He said it's okay. Even after a divorce, there's a three-year statute of limitation. 
So, if you don't go past that, you can demand for an alimony. I see. So, that's why you stayed with your dad. I didn't want to see the way dad tormented you. So, I wanted him to get hurt. Otherwise, that guy won't be sorry for the affair either. I know. I won't waste your efforts. Yes. In order to prove my husband's adultery and to get back my savings he took away from me, Eula stayed with my husband. Now, we just need to put the finishing touches on it. I see. But this was the beginning of a new ordeal. I then consulted my brother and prepared to file for alimony. Once I sent the materials for the request for compensation by certified mail, I received this phone call from Kyle. Hey, what do you mean you're charging me alimony? Stop kidding me. I'm sorry, I have Eula's future to think about. I just wanted to finish things with you. So, I had them send you a certified copy. What's with you finish things? And where is Eula? Come on, I don't have to tell you that. I've gotten used to my husband for yelling at me, so I was able to answer him back in a dignified manner. Then, please transfer the alimony to my account, okay? There's no way I'll pay. I will sue you for being a bad wife. You better get ready. My husband says, but I have already predicted it. I've also discussed it with my brother and decided to file a claim for alimony against my husband's mistress. This is allowed by law. So the responsibility for alimony costs due to adultery or cheating is considered to be on the other side. My husband's mistress was living in her hometown, so the documents must have been seen by her family members. You can imagine what happened after that. I am so, so sorry. I heard that the woman with whom he was having an affair was in tears as she contacted my brother's law firm. Her parents got mad and she was told to put all their savings toward repaying the alimony. So she asked if the amount could be reduced a little bit and started crying to my brother. Of course, my brother refused to do this. That's because he had received her parents' agreement to pay the full amount of the fee. Now, as for Kyle, he's on the road to ruin on his own. Kyle was all set to sue me, but apparently, the plan fell through when they couldn't find a lawyer. Then, it sounds like the alimony has made things nasty between him and his affair partner. And as for my ex-mother-in-law, she got mentally disturbed by this incident and suffered a cerebral hemorrhage and has been in need of nursing care. And what happened to me and Yola? I must tell you about it, right? Mom, I'm off. Have a good day. Yola is currently working part-time to save money for college. She goes to a regular high school and commutes from my apartment. We also decided to use the alimony to pay for Yula's higher education. Of course, Kyle has also contacted me several times, asking for a reconciliation. You guys, I'll forgive you, so come back, or else you'll be in for a world of hurt. I get threatened every time like this. I record the call and consulted my brother, who is a lawyer. I filed a damage report and claimed that I was being threatened, and Kyle, as expected, tried to get in touch with Eula, but... I'm your protector. You know what happens when you mess with me. Yep, I'm glad you didn't get custody, and I don't want to live with a father like you. What? What do you mean? That's... Dad. When a child is over the age of 15, he or she can decide which parent they want to follow. When you explained to me about what I was going to do about it, you told me, right? You said, you can do that on your own, so I had mom take custody. But you were traveling overseas all the time with your mistress, so that's why you never asked about my uncle, who is a lawyer. No way, I don't accept that. You've got to be kidding me. Well, why don't you check the family register? 
my last name will probably be changed to mom's maiden name. So, with that said, Yula hung up the phone. My husband never learned his lesson, saying, "Give me custody, or I'll show you no mercy." Calling again and again. This led to my ex-husband's being charged with intimidation, so he got interrogated by the police. The case was dropped due to the fact that it was a first offense. But word got around in the neighborhood that he had been arrested by the police. It seems that made him feel ashamed. I haven't heard from my ex-husband since then. For years, I have endured for my daughter's sake. That my daughter would take revenge on my adulterous husband, I had no idea. With such a kind-hearted daughter, I want both of us to continue living by supporting each other as mother and daughter from here on. Thank you, mom, for keeping me safe all these years. I was the one who was being protected. I didn't know you could be so dependable. When did you grow up? I'm glad you've grown up to be such a kind girl. Now, I'll have to step up and do my best for her sake.